When excavators in Nevada burst open a rock outside the village of Tonopa, they find an unexpected underground cavern hiding a big secret. The miners struggle to put the pieces of the puzzle together, but eventually discover something astonishing. Joe gestured toward a desolate outcropping outside Tonopa, Nevada. This was a place where even the scorpions feared to tread. The excavator's teeth tore through the stubborn rock with a shriek of protest. The team expected to see the familiar dull gray of ore or the glistening hint of a silver vein. Instead, they stared into a void. Blackness yawned where solid earth should have been. It was a black emptiness that defied the unforgiving desert landscape. Joe exchanged a look with Sarah. They had dug into an underground cavern. Flashlights sliced through the darkness as they meticulously lowered a makeshift rigging. Joe went first. His descent was slow and deliberate. The beam of his flashlight revealed a small chamber, a space that shouldn't exist within the solid rock. Sarah followed. Her geologist's mind wrestled with the impossible. The cavity was roughly hewn and its surface showed signs of tool work. Yet, there were no signs of mine supports or storage. It seemed purpose-built, but for what, and more importantly, by whom? It had been centuries since the last foot had been set in this hidden place. There was only darkness. Except in the far corner, there lay a chest. And it seemed surprisingly untouched by time. The wood was a deep mahogany, cracked and warped with age. It was bound by tarnished iron straps. This was more than discarded supplies or a forgotten miner's cachet. Joe moved towards it. It took an effort to still his trembling hands. He fumbled with the rusted latch, which surrendered with an unnaturally loud crack that echoed in the silent chamber like a gunshot. The lid swung open. Inside was a leather-bound journal on top of a neatly folded bundle of what appeared to be old, brittle paper. Faded script covered the yellowed pages. A date stared back at them, more than two centuries old. A name scrawled on the cover seemed vaguely familiar, but Joe's mind struggled to place it through the haze of adrenaline and disbelief. Sarah let out a soft gasp beside him. Recognition dawned in her eyes. They exchanged another look, and the question floated silently between them. Could this truly be, or was it an elaborate hoax? Was it a relic planted to fool those who dared dream of lost riches in the exhausted Nevada earth? With a reverence approaching the sacred, Joe gently opened the journal. Each page was a brittle window into the past. The ink was faded, and the handwriting was both elegant and unfamiliar. His rough fingers traced letters. Sarah was already lost in the text. The language, phrasing, and the descriptions had her spellbound. She was sure it was from the early 19th century, just like the date said. If this was a fake, an extraordinary effort had gone into it. She flipped to another page and pointed out a mention of a specific landmark. It was a bend in the river that was corroborated on a dusty map she carried. Each match she made with documented historical records was a small victory. Eventually, her composure cracked. Look at this, she said. She pointed to a rough sketch of a mountain range. This matches old surveying maps of the area. But see here, this ridge doesn't exist anymore. Land must have shifted over time. Then she spoke her verdict out loud. She pointed at a faded name on the inside cover of the journal and said, Lewis and Clark. This belonged to the Lewis and Clark expedition. Joe grunted, Sarah was right. This detail pointed towards a level of authenticity that was difficult to dismiss. The evidence was mounting piece by careful piece. The names, locations, and descriptions of weather events, they all formed a chain of authenticity that stretched across the chasm of time. Joe and Sarah knew that they couldn't keep something like this under wraps. There were too many questions and too many eyes in this once sleepy mining town that would soon be wide awake with the buzz of discovery. One wrong word or one careless slip and they'd be swarmed by reporters. Then, the fortune seekers would come, and those looking to claim a piece of history that wasn't theirs to own. Joe knew just the person to approach, Evelyn Baker. She was a local history professor, fiercely protective of Nevada's heritage and, most importantly, as sharp as a tack with an unerring eye for detail. 
Most saw her as an eccentric old woman obsessed with faded journals and dusty ledgers, but Joe recognized the glint in her eye. She had a prospector's hunger for knowledge rather than gold. Getting a hold of Evelyn took longer than anticipated. The university receptionist spoke of conferences and out-of-office field research, but Joe was persistent. His urgency finally broke through the layers of academia. His call with Evelyn was short and to the point. Bring it, she said, and don't tell a soul. The drive to her secluded house, tucked into the foothills surrounding Tanapa, felt drawn out. Sarah kept running through the details in her mind, the dates, cross-references, anything that could be used to prove the journal's impossible authenticity. Evelyn greeted them with a piercing gaze. Joe carefully placed the chest on the floor and the journal on the overladen table in her study. Evelyn approached with an almost unsettling quietude. She slipped on a pair of thin cotton gloves and gently lifted the aged book. The hours that followed were a whirlwind of meticulous examination punctuated by stretches of strained silence. Evelyn muttered to herself. Occasionally, she barked out sharp questions to Sarah. More often, she simply stared at the pages. Sarah and Joe waited for Evelyn to finally break her silence. Then, she finally looked up. Her eyes were wide. Slowly, she laid the journal back on the table. Well, she said, I'd say you stumbled onto something quite extraordinary. A wave of relief crashed over them, but the celebration was cut short. Evelyn carefully picked up the leather-bound volume and turned it over in her hands. Sarah gasped. Her hand flew to her mouth. Joe let out a stunned, no way. Hidden in a meticulous false bottom of the chest was a set of neatly folded maps. Unlike the journal, these were not yellowed with age. The paper was crisp. The ink was still a deep, bold black. The maps appeared newer. Yet, the unmistakable hand of someone long dead could be seen in the lines. There was a careful notation of landmarks. The maps were familiar and utterly foreign all at once. These, Evelyn breathed, are not recorded anywhere, not in any known account of the Lewis and Clark expedition. The maps unfurled across Evelyn's cluttered desk. They were a puzzle within a riddle, a whisper from the depths of time that made no sense in the present. Joe traced the familiar outline of the surrounding Nevada mountains, but found anomalies, valleys where there should be sharp peaks, rivers flowing in directions that defied nature itself. What does this mean? He asked. No one seemed ready to answer. Sarah was meticulously comparing the maps to historical geological surveys of the region. She said there had been subtle shifts over the centuries, of course, fault lines and erosion for sure, but Nothing this dramatic could have taken place. Nothing could account for the differences between the modern-day geology and the historical maps. Joe leaned closer. He studied the precise line work and the confident strokes that marked roots and features. It was done with the assured hand of an accomplished cartographer. Before he could say anything, Evelyn nodded slowly. Yes, she told him. These undoubtedly belong to Lewis. Sarah was the first to ask why the chart could include roots and places that simply didn't exist. Ever the pragmatist, Evelyn set aside the mystery of distorted topography. She told them to consider what was not shown on the maps. There was no mention of mining camps that would only spring up decades later, and no hint of Tanapa itself. If Lewis had discovered a hint of silver here, every map would have reflected that. A chill ran through the room. The history of the West was built on men driven mad by silver fever, and here they were, sitting on a secret that could have rewritten it all. If Lewis chose not to reveal it, there had to be a reason. Silence fell as each of them wrestled with the implications. Joe suggested Lewis may have found something else, maybe more valuable than silver. Sarah asked what could possibly be worth more than silver. The answer hit Joe like a desert windstorm. He pointed at a series of seemingly random markings on the edge of one map. They were geometric shapes, a cluster of unfamiliar symbols, and they stood out against the detailed rendering of the landscape. A cipher, Sarah whispered. Her eyes shone with the thrill of confronting a puzzle worthy of her intellect. 
Evelyn's lips curled into a half smile. Looks like our Captain Lewis was a man of hidden depths. This isn't just cartography, it's cryptography. This discovery wasn't simply a relic of the past. It was a map to uncharted possibilities. This was a cipher that could lead them to a hidden truth, and they wouldn't rest until they'd unlocked it. Eventually, Evelyn had to go public. This was just too big to keep a secret. It wasn't ethical to keep academia out of the loop. Her pronouncement that the journal and the maps had been found and were undeniably authentic sent shockwaves through the quiet academic world. Word spread with the blistering speed of a desert wildfire. Soon, Tanapa was a name on everyone's lips. The old town was accustomed to a slow and steady heartbeat, but now it was thrust into a violent maelstrom. News vans choked the dusty streets. Their satellite dishes reached skyward like strange alien flowers. Reporters jostled for position. Historians, both credentialed and self-proclaimed, descended upon the site. Everyone was armed with a theory or speculation. The miners blinked in the harsh glare of camera flashes. Joe was uncomfortable with attention at the best of times. Sarah found a sort of solace in facts. She clung to the concrete certainties of geology and historical records to drown out the noise of the media circus. But even she felt the first stirrings of unease as the crowd swelled and the intentions became less and less clear. Then came the suits. There were representatives of museums, historical societies, and wealthy collectors. Each wore a meticulously crafted smile and bore carefully worded offers. The negotiations went on behind closed doors. There was a talk of preservation, of the importance of making the find accessible to the public. But behind it all thrummed an undeniable undercurrent of ownership. Who would profit? In knowledge, dollars, or fame? The initial euphoria of the discovery had given way to a complex knot of exhaustion. The maps, the cipher, and the potential secrets they held now weighed heavier than any silver Joe and Sarah might have struck. Their bond felt strained under the unrelenting scrutiny and the looming question, whom could they trust? With the media frenzy swirling around them, finding someone both qualified and trustworthy to decipher the maps became a delicate balancing act. Evelyn discreetly reached out to a renowned cryptography expert, Dr. Eleanor Pierce. The woman was known for her brilliance and ironclad discretion, and she understood the magnitude of what was at stake. Dr. Pierce arrived with an aura of calm that cut through the chaos of the dig site. Her gaze swept across the maps. She took in the familiar contours and the enigmatic symbols of the cipher. Then she began her methodical work. Historical ciphers were her specialty, a blend of linguistics, mathematics, and the subtle art of understanding how a cunning mind from the past might have concealed its intentions. Days turned into a blur of tense waiting. Joe and Sarah held their breaths as Dr. Pierce toiled. It was a silent battle of intellect versus the unyielding secrets of the past. They were miners used to answers found in the earth, but this was more elusive, as if history itself was on trial. Then it happened. Dr. Pierce called them into her makeshift tent and gestured at a translation scrawled in a margin. The words were simple, stark, and utterly bewildering. The maps did not lead to gold, nor lost caches of treasure, or even forgotten pioneer trails. They charted something far less tangible, but infinitely more valuable. Water, underground aquifers, and intricate networks of hidden springs. This was a detailed map of the very lifeblood of the arid Nevada desert. A gasp escaped Sarah. She was, after all, a geologist to her core. She understood the sheer scale of it all. Lewis had stumbled upon a truth that had escaped the notice of all who came after him. This parched land was secretly rich. Its heartbeat was connected to a life-giving force hidden beneath rock and sand. It took time for the implication to sink in. These maps held the power to reshape the region. Drought, the relentless threat of the desert, could be mitigated. The potential for agriculture could be unlocked. New frontiers could be opened for those brave enough to dream of verdant fields where only sagebrush now grew. Joe and Sarah looked at each other. 
This wasn't about personal wealth, fleeting fame, or their own place in history books. They had inadvertently been entrusted with a legacy that carried the weight of the future. The world soon descended upon Tanapa with renewed fervor. This time, it would not be driven by a thirst for gold. It would be the lure of water beneath the desert that would be the draw card. Joe and Sarah, the seasoned veteran and the practical geologist, would forever be remembered. Not for what they took from the earth, but for what they released back into the world. Isn't it amazing how something historical can still have a huge impact on the present? Do you have a story about something historical that was found and ended up having a huge impact on someone's life? Tell us about it in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.